Hello there and welcome to this tutorial on creating a tileable dirt and pebble texture. Now this video is not a quick model or time lapse video like the other additional tileable texture videos that build up on my tileable ground texture tutorial series, but it's an additional video because it uses different techniques and different methods of creating the tileable texture. For this tutorial, you're going to need Blender and Jimp. Now I've started with sculpting a few pebbles, a few variations of rocks. And if you have no clue what I'm doing here with the sculpting tools, you should check out my low poly rocks and stones tutorial, as I will explain the sculpting methods in the beginning of that video. For the purpose of this tutorial, you shouldn't go too high on the poly count of these little rock variations, as we will multiply them by a lot using a particle system. And as they will only cover a bit of screen space, you don't want to go too high on the poly count. Now after you've sculpted out these rock variations, usually just about 3 or even less are enough, as we will rotate and scale them randomly later, you should go to object mode, select all three and hit Ctrl G to join them to a group. After that, you can just move this group to a different layer. Now create a new plane and double its size by hitting S and 2. We scale it up by 2 and don't just use the default scale as we want more overview over how many pebbles we actually want to scatter around the texture. After that, go to the particles tab and add a new particle system to this plane. Then go to the Render tab and select Group and select the group in the drop-down menu that we've just created. Then you can go to Emission and now set up a few settings that you like on how many pebbles you want to be scattered around this texture. First of all, you should reduce the amount and change the Start, End and Lifetime value to 1 so that all the pebbles will show up at the first frame. Then in the Render tab, scale up the size so that you can actually see the pebbles on this plane and scale it to something that you like. This is also dependent on the texture size and what kind of texture you want to create if you only want to create a pebble texture or something like this, a mixed dirt and pebble texture. If the pebbles won't show up on your plane like in this case, just move the amount slider a bit so that the particles will be refreshed. Now you can play with all those values, the amount, the scale and so on to decide on how many pebbles you want to scatter around. Now activate the random tab and change the random sliders up a bit so that the objects will be rotated. Now you will have different scales and rotations on these objects that come from the group that we've created, even though it's just three basic shapes. Now you can use the jittering slider to change the position of these pebbles a bit. Obviously you could also change the method that is used to scatter around the particles, but for the purpose of this tutorial, the jittered face distribution will be enough. So when you're happy with the distribution of those pebbles, go to the modifiers tab and click on convert particle system so that the particles will be converted to actual geometry. Now also keep in mind to delete the particle system again, so you won't have double the amount of geometry on that plane. After that, go into edit mode on the plane and subdivide it a few times. Now it's important that you do this step after applying the particle system as the phase distribution method that we've used would else kind of create unwanted geometry so you would get some sort of grid on the plane and the pebbles wouldn't be scattered around randomly but in order and that's not what we want. Then add a displacement modifier to the plane. Now the texture that we're going to use for this displacement modifier will be created in GIMP. Just create a new texture with a black background at about the size of 1024 by 1024. Go to Filters, Render, Clouds and Difference Clouds. Now this texture will modulate the displacement of our plane. The white parts will displace it on the positive z-axis and the black parts on the negative z-axis. So you can now decide on what kind of dirt normal map you want to create and how much of texture you want in your normal map. In this case I just chose an X and Y size of 10, you can play with that and create your own kind of style you want to go for. It's important to select tileable as this is a tileable texture tutorial. And you can increase the detail 
which will also mean you should increase the geometry on the plane, which I will show you right now. Now just save the texture, and we will use that on the displacement modifier. On the displacement modifier, create a new texture, and go to the texture tab. Now select image, and load up the cloud image that we've just created. On the displacement modifier, you can now adjust the strength of the texture you want to have applied on the geometry. So this will mean the stronger you apply the texture, the more waviness or the more geometry will the normal map later bake out. Now keep in mind, as I've said in my overview video on normal maps, the normal maps just fake geometry. So you shouldn't set this value too high, as else it would be obvious that you're faking it with normal maps and it's not actual geometry. It should be very subtle. If you now want to increase the detail of this displacement, add a subsurf modifier, but make sure that it's over the actual displacement modifier. Now you should also keep in mind that we will duplicate this plane to create a tunnelable texture, and that you shouldn't go too high on geometry as else it might get too high on the poly count and lag out when trying to bake. Now if you're happy with all the settings and the strength of the displacement, apply all those modifiers. Then select all the pebbles and lastly with shift right click select the plane and hit ctrl j to join this to one object. Now these steps are the same as in the tunnelable ground texture tutorial as we will bake out the normal and the ambient occlusion map. This time the only difference is that we will be using the internal renderer and cycles to bake out the textures. Duplicate this object around so that it has occlusion from all sides. After that just join all the things again to one single mesh and make sure to select the middle one last so the origin stays at the center. Then create a new plane and again scale it up to double the size by hitting S and 2 as this is the reference scale that we used in the beginning. Also make sure to unwrap that plane by going into edit mode hitting U and unwrap. Then go to the UV image editor and add a new image which we will use for normal map baking. Now select Cycles as the render engine and add a new material to that newly created low poly plane. On that material change the color from a color to an image texture and load in the texture that we've just created. Then make sure to reset the position of both the high poly and the low poly model to the center by hitting Alt and G. Select the high poly model and then hide it and shift select the low poly model and unhide it again. Then we can bake out the normal map by going to the render tab, selecting bake, normals, select it to active at a distance of about one. And then just bake it out and wait for the result and make sure to save the image. After that, I've now switched back to Blender internals renderer as I feel like the ambient occlusion maps get baked faster in there. Now it's on you to decide which one you want to use for baking the ambient occlusion map. To bake out the ambient occlusion map, I will go to the world tab at ambient occlusion and set up the samples to about 12 to increase the quality. Go to the render tab, select bake and ambient occlusion, again select to active with a higher distance at about one and hit bake. Keep in mind to go into edit mode of the object when selecting the texture. After you've baked it out, save it. Now before we start actually texturing in Jump, we need just the last image that will help us speed up the texturing process. For that purpose, select the high poly model and delete out all the planes that we duplicated as well as the original plane that held the displacement information as we will just need the pebbles. Then select the camera and clear the rotation and location. Move it up by a bit, one unit is enough already and select autographic mode. Change the dimensions to the dimensions of the texture size that you've used in the cloud texture and the normal map etc as well, so 1024 by 1024, and actually render out 100% to get the size and not just half the size. To fit the texture perfectly with our scale reference, change the autographic scale to 4. Then make sure to delete out any other plane that obstructs the view that we've used for scale reference, so you just have the pebbles left. Then go to the render tab and at shading instead of sky select transparent. Then you can just hit F12 to render out the camera view and you will get an alpha map of the pebbles which we will use to texture the pebbles and so we don't have to hand paint all of them. Again make sure to save out the texture 
as we will now move to Jim and use all of them together to create our diffuse and spec map. Now I went to CG textures again and selected a smooth rock texture for our rocks and a basic sand soil texture to be used as our foundation. Now first of all, import the AO map and the basic soil texture. When importing maps that don't fit the image scale, just go to layer, layer to image size. Because when using the make seamless filter, it will only work if the layer is actually the same as the image size. Then change the blend mode of the AO map to multiply to only get the shadows and not the light parts. Now import the rock texture and again, layer to image size and make seamless. Then import our pebble alpha map, which you will see will perfectly fit with the uh, AO bake. Right click the layer and select alpha to selection so that our selection will be exactly the pebbles. And then add an alpha channel to our rock texture as JPG files don't have an alpha channel. Then invert the selection and hit delete to delete out everything that's around the pebbles and not the pebbles themselves. Make sure when hitting delete you are actually on the rock texture layer. Then you can just hide the alpha pebble overlay that we've created and move the rock texture layer under the multiply layer of the AO map. Also make sure to delete the selection again so we won't only affect the pebbles once we want to change something. Now the further steps are dependent on what you want to create. I'd like to have my pebbles a bit brighter so I select the curve filter and brighten up the uh, rock texture a bit. I also add an overlay layer of soft light of a brownish color to get less of a photorealistic look and more of a yeah kind of stylized look. After you're done, make sure to save out the diffuse texture and then you can merge all of the layers and desaturate them and use the levels filter to create the spec map as in the other tutorials. Now in this case, you should not give much of a spec value to this sand as that would be kind of looking like wet sand always and I feel like it looks kind of plastic with a brownish texture and a high spec value. If you really want to create a wet looking sand texture, you should use a noise texture on top of the spec map so that the specular reflections will actually look like they come from sand and not just something like a plastic looking sand. Now as you can see this texture looks a bit busy, I feel like I've created too many pebbles but that's no problem, I just recreated another texture in a few minutes because once you know this technique it doesn't really take much time to create these textures and I've used a little less value on the amount at the particle system and you can see you get a less busy texture. So that's already it for this tutorial. I hope I gave you some helpful hints on how you can speed up the texturing process when baking out something like these alpha maps if you want specific parts of your texture to be yeah, a specific color you can use these alpha overlays to kind of pick out the geometry before actually texturing it and then you can just use the selection of the alpha map to texture it. Alright, so this is probably the last tolerable ground texture tutorial for now, as I'll move on to modular parts in the next tutorials, but if you have any suggestions on more tolerable textures, just leave me a comment and I'll take a look at them and kind of find out a way at how to create them and then make a tutorial later on. Thanks for watching! <laughs>